food prices and how this is going to be affecting a lot of people. And there is a lot that goes into this, folks. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's going down and you're going to be blown away when I give you this information on some of these oil companies, which is really adding to what is taking place here. These food prices is going to start really affecting a lot of people, millions and millions and millions of people. And it's going to be affecting millions of kids also. We have to really think about this, folks. As a parent, your kids are getting out of school now and your kids are going to be home. Do you have a job that's going to be able to um, supply the food that these kids are going to need on a daily basis because they're not at school anymore? There's a lot of parents out there. There's a lot of single parents out there that are struggling to just to put one meal on the table, maybe two, you know, and now they're going to have to add another meal into that whole equation that they're having to take on now with the kids getting out of school for summertime. You know, kids are growing and, you know, they get hungry. They want snacks, you know, all this kind of stuff. And it really, really gets really hard for a lot of parents. And this is going to be a, um, as these prices keep rising and they're going to keep rising folks. Um, we haven't hit the end yet. This is the, uh, um, we're in the very beginning of this uh, total mess that we're in right now. And we're going to be striking um, a, a very big breaking point for a lot of people out here to not be able to be able to afford to put food on the table, even though they're working a full time job. I mean, even though that these things are going on. You know, they're going out and they're busting their rear ends to put, you know, a roof over their head and food and stuff on the table. And it's going to be really hard. And it's also going to affect another group of people in this country. And that's our senior citizens. All these people that are on Social Security and stuff, you know, as these prices go up, a lot of senior citizens, once they pay their, you know, their basic utilities and, you know, their rent or their mortgage and whatever else, they don't have a lot of money left. And these prices are keeps rising. Every time I go to the store, everything it's going, it, it it just keeps going up. The prices have changed. You know, I did notice uh, uh, now Walmart, the Walmart store by me, finally flipped their chicken breast was a dollar ninety nine up to about two weeks ago. And last week when I went to the store, it was um, was it two thirty eight, I believe. So you know. Everything's going up. It doesn't matter how big these companies are. It doesn't matter what they do or anything else. They have to raise the prices because it's just the nature of the beast. And this is the reason why. All right. Now, some of the the uh, inflation and stuff, the data up till March, the April hasn't been released yet. The index for meats, poultry, fish and eggs increased 14 percent over a year ago while beef rose over 16% over a year ago. And the World Food Bank forecast, the World Bank, all right, forecast wheat prices will rise more than 40% in just this year alone. And what do you think that's gonna do? And here is one of the biggest reasons why, and why, in a sense, it, Nobody is trying to rein these people in and nobody's trying to stop what they're doing is just beyond me. Now, it has nothing to do with either if you're a Republican or if you're a Democrat or whatever side of the fence you may be on. OK, these are these oil companies and these oil companies are ruining this country just to put these profits into their pockets. And I'll wait until you hear some of these profits that these guys are putting into their pockets. And let's start right off with Shell, all right? This is just the first quarter numbers, folks, okay? Just the first quarter of this year. One quarter out of four, one quarter, all right? Shell's earnings rose $9.1 billion, all right? This time last year, they were at 3.2 billion. 
So that's a 7.3 billion, you know, income. All right. Now you have BP, record profits. This is all over the internet. It's right here. All right. BP, record profits, $6.2 billion in profits, more than doubling to $2.6 billion from the same period last year, the same quarter of last year. Last year at this time, they made $2.6 billion. This year, they made $6.2 billion. This is the problem, folks, okay? These people are putting a lot of people um, in, in, in a really hurting way. I mean, they, they are really... They're really screwing with us American people over here, all right? Because this isn't isn't the, the fuel price. This is your diesel and all these, okay? Exxon doubles its profits from last year, $5.48 billion, all right? Now, the big one, the one that they really should go after, I'm sorry, and they should do something to this company, all right? And it's the revenue for the Irving, the Texas-based company, for the first quarter of this year, you all sitting down, $90.5 billion. Compared to the quarter last year, same quarter, last year they took in $59.1 billion. Does anybody see a problem with this? $90.5 billion in one quarter. Do the math, folks. Chevron also reported a $6.2 billion profit. All right. That was over the same period of last year was a $1.4 billion. I mean, these people are just, they're killing us. You know, every one of these companies are, are reporting these massive, massive profits. And it's just getting ridiculous. And who is reining this in? Who's putting a stop to this? This diesel fuel price is the higher it goes, folks. They said that by August, they're going to, gas prices are going to be over six bucks a gallon. And they're also now predicting that diesel fuel costs will be between $7.30 a gallon and $8 a gallon by August. Now, if that really does take place with all, everything that takes fuel, we're in a world of hurt. Your farm equipment uses diesel. Trucks that move all our goods use diesel. Trains use diesel. The ships, the cargo ships, they use diesel. Do you realize that it costs a cargo ship $133,000 a day just in diesel fuel? That's why our prices are so high, folks. And I'm not going to start coming down. What I'm trying to tell you is, Things are looking really good right now for a lot of the consumers, all right? People aren't seeing as many shortages and stuff anymore. People aren't seeing what they were seeing, you know, six months ago. Back then, a lot of us were all talking about all those YouTubers that are on the kind of the same page. Okay, we're all talking about what is happening and what was coming and what was going to take place and everything that we talked about and trying to get people to start prepping them when you could still afford it to top up you know top off your preps do whatever you had to do then because now we've priced people right out of prepping and maybe that's the plan that could be the plan folks i don't know who knows where this is going to go we don't know where this is going to go we don't know what's going to take place and we don't know how or what the end result is going to be. We don't know what is going to happen with what's going on overseas, with the whole Russian Ukraine thing. We don't know where that's going to go. We have a lot of chaos going on in this country right now. We don't know where that's going to go either. We also don't know what's going to take place with the Chinese right on the Taiwan border. You see, we're all surrounded by all this kind of stuff. And all it takes is one little hiccup to throw a wrench in the whole thing. And the next thing you know, we're right back to square one. Do you realize that it's going to take, once they really start getting things rolling again in China, all right, folks? Now, China isn't completely open yet. Yes, they are starting to let people go back to work. They're starting to reopen the ports and stuff. But they're having issues of getting the products that they're shipping over here 
to the ports by trucks because they have to come in from all these other provinces. They have to come in and these guys or women, I don't know which, you know, they don't want to be going into some of these areas because they don't, don't want to take a risk of getting stuck there if something happens, if you get what I'm saying, because we've all seen what has been taking place and a lot of people just don't want to drive in there. But even once they do finally get all this stuff moving again, they estimate that it's going to take 74 days from the time that they start to load the ships and start trying to get goods in there until that ship will reach its destination, which used to be a 30 to 45 day turnaround. There's 344 ships right now that are setting off the, court, the, the port over there in China and they're just waiting. They have to be in, they have to get unloaded and then reloaded and then get back over here. So you can see where this can be a ripple effect coming down the road. And will this affect food products? You know, a, a lot of people on my video last week, they kept saying, well, we don't get food from China. We don't get food from China. Well, you'd be surprised at what does come over here from China, folks. If you get on and do your own little homework, you'd be amazed. But also, you have to remember, the number one thing that we need in this country for canned goods is 10. And we import 10 from China. Just saying. I think it's really a key point of everybody is for their own survival and hopefully peace of mind and everything else that... Everybody needs to start a garden or start planting plants and you can do them in pots and everything else. I have potatoes going right now. I just haven't really, I haven't done the video and stuff yet. I did a video, showed you how I did them. I bought these, um, these, these little bags and stuff. You can do them right on the back porch and everything else. Boom, they're going right now. I want to get some other things and stuff going. You know, I, I want to make sure that people understand that you can do this, even if you are in a, an apartment, a townhome, condo, if you don't have a backyard, you know, whatever it may be. I mean, you can plant some things and still grow some food. You know, a lot of things you can get a lot out of, like lettuce, um, all of those type of things, carrots and radishes. Those things are all growing pots and stuff very easy. The thing that's really hard to find is decent potting soil and also decent type of fertilizers. And if you do find them, they are quite expensive. I found a good bone meal that I put in with my potatoes that I mixed in with all the dirt and stuff and uh, um, the soil that I did buy. And uh, that box for, I think it's two pounds. Uh, I think it was like, I forget, 15, 20 bucks. It was expensive, you know, when you used to be able to buy that stuff for dirt cheap. Not anymore. Anything that's got the word fertile in front of it, <laughs> they're charging you an arm and a leg for it, you know. But these food prices, they're really going to start hurting a lot of people this coming year. And this coming summer is going to be really rough on a lot of families, especially with kids. And I feel for them because it's not like they're not working. It's not like they're sitting at home, you know, twirling their thumbs, playing video games and eating bonbons. They're not doing that. They're going out and going to work, but their rent or their mortgage is so high and their car payments and insurance is going up. We just got notified the other day, you know, our insurance is going up another 50 bucks or something. It's like, Neither one of us had any accidents or tickets in God knows how many years, 20, 30 years, you know, but everything's going up. You know, every time, you know, turn around, you know, this is going up, you know, your phone bill goes up, your cable bill goes up, you know, everybody is increasing the price that they're charging and they want, you know, they want us to pay even more than what we have to pay, especially all these oil companies, which I think 
that somebody should step in from the government and say enough is enough. I mean, they're posting these huge profits that are just ungodly. They're destroying this country right out from underneath us. And for what? For them to post a $90.5 billion profit in the first quarter? I mean, come on, folks, really think about this for a second here. You know, these people are just driving us into the ground. And they got us. They got us by the cojones. You know what I'm saying? I mean, because for one, you have to have the gas to get to work to make the money. And for two, you know, if you have heating oil, which has gone way up, you know, heating oil has gone through the roof. So you have to have heat. If you don't have an alternate source like a wood stove or any of those type of things, you have to have something like that. Then you also have to turn around and you have to make sure that, you know, you have your basic necessities that goes along with, you know, maybe it's a gas stove you have because all the gases are all going up. Propane, natural gas, electricity is going up. You know, everybody's raising rates. Everybody's on the bandwagon of charging more. There isn't much at this point in time we can do. We are sitting back and we're along for the ride. And that's why it was it's so very important for people to be prepped and be ready. You know, I people comment all the time, well, you know, I'm I, I don't I'm not going to I'm not going to prep and I I don't believe in prepping and I don't believe in this. Well, all it takes is one little incident in your life to really throw a wrench into your whole idea that you don't need to be prepped and ready. And let me give you a perfect example. What happens if you get in a car accident going to work? Not your fault. You're driving along. You have a green light. Some idiot coming the other way runs the red light and smashes into you. Now you're in the hospital. Now you got a broken leg or a broken shoulder, an arm. You can't go to work. What are you going to do? You see, if you were prepping, even if you had a two or three week supply of food. Okay, we'll go basic minimum, two, three weeks supply of food. That's two or three weeks that you may not have to worry about really buying a lot of food to have to feed your family. You may have to pick up maybe a gallon of milk or something here or there if you have kids or something like that. But the majority of your groceries, you probably could survive on for those two or three weeks until you can figure something out. You see what I'm saying? So longer that you were prepped for, if you were prepped for a month, two months, three months, or more, that's just longer that you don't have to worry about how you're going to feed the people in your family, especially if you're the breadwinner in the family. These food prices, as long as these fuel prices either hold or keep going up, the food prices are going to keep rising even more than what they're expecting for them to do. Mark my words. Because these companies aren't going to be paying and, you know, they're not going to be like, oh, you know, it's costing, a, a, you know, an extra $10 or something. You know, we'll just eat that. Don't worry about it. They're going to charge you 20 because they want to make a profit. So they're going to pay for the $10 and then they just pocket it 20. Look what the oil companies are doing to us. When all reality, if you really think about it, if they put the prices back down to even 275, three bucks a gallon nationwide, they'd still be turning a profit and we wouldn't be paying such high prices at the gas pumps. We wouldn't be paying such high prices at the grocery stores. We wouldn't be paying such high prices for car parts, for furniture, for electronics for refrigerators and washers and dryers and it, this affects everything the shirt on your back is going to start going up and somebody needs to stop it somebody needs to step in and put a stop to this because it's getting out of control because all they're doing is ruining this country this great country that we live in that is all they're doing and for what? 
profits to make sure that the shareholders and all the companies from the oil companies to the grocery stores, to the furniture stores, to the hotel chains, to whoever, as long as they are happy, that's all that matters. Doesn't matter if they're putting the little guy out of business. Doesn't matter if those kids are going to go hungry because the parents that are working two jobs can't afford the food from the grocery store. And it's only a matter of time before food banks start drying up because where are they going to get this from? Although if they can get it from their stores, because if they can't sell it, maybe hopefully they'll donate it instead of throwing it in the trash can. That would be a crying shame just to throw food in the trash can when you know people in your own community are going hungry. That's treason in my opinion, but that's just my opinion, folks. Nobody in this country should be going hungry. Nobody. We should be taking care of this country first, and we should be taking care of everybody in this country health-wise. They should be taking care of if they make sure that they're fed, make sure they have a roof over their head. All these homeless people and stuff that are out there, they don't even have a fighting chance. But we're too worried about taking care of all these other countries, aren't we? What do you all think? You know, for me to have these kind of conversations about this great country that I'm in, that I was born in, it breaks my heart. And I'm sure it does to a lot of you out there also. We shouldn't be doing this. We shouldn't be having these discussions about this country. And the sad thing is, is all these other countries are sitting back and they're just looking at us and laughing because we're destroying ourselves. Until something changes, what are we going to do? We're along for the ride. I just hope that you had listened years back when I started my channel. For all you people that's been here for a long time, I'm pretty sure all you've been prepping. But I've been saying this from day one. The storms are coming and you got to start getting ready when you could afford it.